thank you for coming. This first piece is called Columbus at 3 a.m. No one is up. It is quiet. The machines converse. I am up. I am loud. My pen talks. A holy trinity. My pen, paper, and me. Space in a house, 
empty after empty, room after room, life after life. Okay, okay, call me when they close. A grunt emitted from the proverbial Java as he 
struggle to turn his chair around. His finger protruded, protrusion disgusted Eleanor, an unfamiliar feeling, and she nearly retched when she saw the pink slime of a man. Now how can I help you, beautiful? Um, Eleanor coughed. I, um, she exhaled quickly and said, you have a daughter, she's an amazing artist, and she wanted to meet you for her 18th birthday. The lump stared skeptically. Now look, if it's money you're after, that's going to require some verification or another form of compensation. Otherwise, I have no interest or time to meet this girl, and I'll ask you to leave as I'm very busy today. Oh no, Eleanor jutted in. I don't need money. She missed the crude ploy for sex. She just wants to meet her birth father. Ethan mused to himself. Hmm. If her mom's this hot, I bet she is too. That would make a decent publicity. You know what? Bring her by this time next week, he said. I'll have enough time to get her a proper gift. You said she likes to draw? Oh yes, she's phenomenal. Well, I have just the gift for her. Do come back next week. Thank you so much. This means the world to her. Eleanor rushed home to share the good news while Ethan plotted. Nancy? Yes, Mr. Pup. His secretary's voice was smooth as honey on marble. Book the best photographer in town for this time next week and give me the boardroom. Yes, sir. What color was his desk, his chair, the carpet? What was his view? Asked Elise, using all the questions and more to gauge what to paint for his office, settling on an ivory peony, freshly watered against a black background. Eleanor was so proud. This should have been an audition piece for school, but the idea of family was more important to Elise. She wore her best dress, her mother helped with light makeup, and they framed the piece of art. Young dog, the young woman marveled at her father's building, a looming light gray skyscraper with solar panels on all sides. A plaque engraved, a plaque inside was engraved with words about saving the environment, peppered with subtle references to tax breaks. Nancy, the tall, slender receptionist, walked the duo to the boardroom. I'm happy to meet you, Elise. What do you have there? It's a painting from my father's office. Mom said this would look great in there. She's very right. Nancy mused dispassionately. The trio silently finished the ascent to Ethan's boardroom. Nancy was the only one not shocked by the modeling shoot set up. Then the door swung open and Jerome, Jerome danced through the door. Hello, gorgeous, you must be Elise, he said. No, this is Elise, Eleanor corrected him unfazed. Oh, he gasped, you're more beautiful than I imagined. It suddenly hit her. This was the first time someone had called her baby beautiful. Now, Eleanor had always made a point to emphasize her abilities first, but there were tears welling in Elise's eyes due to this adjective. Thank you, I feel very pretty in this dress. Those were words Eleanor had never heard her daughter say before. Rather than berate herself, she knew today was for her daughter. Elise would never forget this moment, and she would not mar the situation with doubt. Finally, Ethan, the lump of a man, waddled in. His daughter and the photographer abruptly ended their conversation. He stumbled through the door into a chair and oozed out the sides, the bearings of the lower mechanism singing for reinforcements before he let out a sigh of victory. So where's my girl? He said, looking around the room. Hi, Dad. Elise bounded over to him to give him a hug. What is this? You didn't tell me she was deformed, retarded. Get out of my building. That was it. The beginning. Eleanor recovered quickly. Elise, everyone, give me a moment with Ethan. Everyone felt the horror. Jerome escaped. Nancy slunk out of the room. Elise stared, absolutely baffled. Elise, go outside. I'll only be a moment. Elise walked out, defeated. The door echoed as it swung shut on its perfect hinges. I will not allow that. How dare you? What? You dare reject your own blood. She is not my daughter. I have the paperwork here. Eleanor slid a packet of pristine medical notes over to him, the top page confirming her claim. This is not possible. I couldn't produce such a disgusting creature. No, you could. The real question is how you spawned a gorgeous, brilliant, talented young woman. I will not stand for this because you're too fat to. You will not insult me in my own office. I will do what is necessary, you gargantuan piece of trash. And then, from her weary shoulders burst two perfect black wings, the ebony feathers glistening. She hovered just below the ceiling as her fingernails became black claws. Her eyes turned to pitch and her plain brown hair slicked into a long flowing mane. Now, her raspy, low voice shrill with several layered octaves that burst the glass walls. You die. 
Elise spun around, gazed at the, as the lump was ripped to shreds by him, her mother. Viscera landed at her feet. Ethan squealed like a pig as his feet were swallowed, Eleanor ripping flesh and bone like an alligator. Once his legs were gone, she consumed each hand and then arm. I knew you were a crazy bitch, he shrieked. I knew you were worthless, Eleanor hissed. Letting him have the last word was not the plan. Her maw expanded, and with a final gulp, she ate what was left of the lump. Then, with a pleased growl, she floated back to his chair and licked her lips clean. Mommy, Elise whispered, unafraid. Eleanor swiveled slowly, placed a kiss on her daughter's forehead, embracing her daughter, and they flew out of the shattered windows with the painting. I love you, Mommy. I love you too, Elise. Elise would go to school, shock the world with her art, and the duo would never sp speak about the f idea of family again. Juices are flowing, flowers and trees are blooming, new and fresh buds, all but for the 17 who perished for guns. I hope one day I have the courage to roll in the grass. I pray silently that the children in heaven do, that their families on earth know peace. We all need this space. That gleeful laughter a mile away won't soothe my pain for their lives. I wonder if they can be here so far above the joy we struggle to maintain. Change. In the pockets, too damn little. Between roles, owner and mother, employee and daughter, between orders, too many, not enough, not what she wanted. Emotions, happy, frustrated, slash angry, slash sad, slash hungry, pissed off. Sensations, pain, feet, head, want to cry, want to run away, suicidal, never perfect, never fucking close. Achievements don't fucking matter. Interfering with my attempts to make peace. 
peace with you so I can function as an adult. If I need to go to a doctor's appointment for more antidepressants, don't tell me I don't need them. That's just rude. Clearly, I need them if you can still tell me I need them. I know we're broke now. It's mostly my fault. No, it's mostly your fault. However, you're the reason it's so hard to practice to show up to work on time or even make food so I can clean the house and feel better. That's your biggest sin, leaving less than $50 in my bank account when rent is due in three days. Do you understand what that means? I'll have to go to my mom or my grandma for money, which means I'll either have a panic attack or go through half a pack of cigarettes. Oh, and I have no money for cigarettes or gas to drive all the way out there, so double fuck you. I'd be so, better, so much better off with at least the confidence in myself to find a job that pays what I deserve instead of doing lots of shitty temporary jobs that pay next to nothing. And don't you even start on school. I'm not there 100% because of you. You thought slitting my wrists was a better idea than studying, and it took everything in me not to, and I never studied. Then I got sent away to shit doctors, and now I can't go back without getting triggered. The one place I could get free help and the opportunity is gone, ironically, because you put me there. In other news, something that isn't your fault, I can't get any more Lexapro. Healthcare.gov has res responded, hasn't responded either way, whether or not I'm getting Medicaid or giving, being given another option. So I can't refill my prescription, so I'm going off my meds. Been meaning to for a while, so I guess it's a good thing. I should call my mom. She's been telling me to get off them because I guess being on them means I'm not doing enough to help myself. But you know all this. You also know how badly I want to cry and scream and how I need to need a cigarette, but they won't take the edge off. So I'll use my shitty vape and get high from coughing so much. Thanks, but no thanks. Signed, and a, the adult in this relationship. P.S. For fuck's sake. I'm so close to losing my job. Get a hold of yourself. PPS, thanks for getting your shit together.